hey, so I was gonna be super productive this weekend. Like I had it all planned out. I was gonna get so much work done. And then ESCOM, South Africa's electricity provider said, nah, it's not happening. So our power has been going off twice a day these past few days for like three hours each time. So that really sucked. And that was a real bummer. But luckily there was one thing that I remembered that made the whole thing a little bit more bearable. And that's that MSI sent me something really cool to check out. And it is their Meg X570 Unify motherboard. I know, right? It's pretty awesome. But there's just one problem here. Um, I don't actually have a second or third gen Ryzen processor to actually test the board with. Yeah. But what I do have though, is a series one Ryzen chip, namely the R7 1700. And in this video, I'm actually gonna see whether it actually works with the X570 chipset. And one of the reasons I'm kind of hopeful that it will is that MSI doesn't really claim not to support series one. Like it says AMD Ryzen 2000 and 3000 series compatible. It says nothing about 1000 series though, obviously. But on the side of the box, they list off the things that they do support. They don't support Athlon with Radeon graphics or A-Series or Athlon X4. One thing that's not really listed here is first gen Ryzen. So um, maybe we should probably see what the Ryzen 1700 is currently capable of in the gaming K4 from Azrock. So yeah, CPU 3800 at 1.387, RAM at 2400 MHz running at a voltage of 1.2. So yeah, I think I'm gonna run one or two benchmarks, maybe a Cinebench run and maybe just one game, just to see what the 1700 is currently capable of, just in case it actually works with MSI's Meg X570 Unify. If it does, that would be amazing. Let's just go for the multi-core test. All right, that, that looked pretty good. So it looks like we've got a score of 1428, which is not too bad. I think the highest I ever got this chip at 3.8 gigahertz was 1461. I think that gives us a good enough idea of, of what the chip is capable of right now. So I think let's just do one single gaming benchmark and see how that goes. Okay, for this test, we're running Assassin's Creed Odyssey at a resolution of 1080p with the very high graphical preset. Oh, and uh, since this is probably important for you to know, I'm currently running MSI's 5700 XT Gaming X. All right, so it looks like we averaged around 46 FPS there. It's about what I'd expect. I think we should be ready to uh, switch this puppy out. There we go. Ooh. Look at that sexy boy. 5700 XT Gaming X come to play. Now the last time I actually did anything with the system motherboard wise was when Brett from UFD Tech actually built it for me. So, huh, th this could go horribly wrong. Wow, the screw isn't even tight. Good job, Brett. Was that all the screws he actually put in? I think Brett legit only screwed in four screws. <laughs> <laughs> Only need four motherboard screws. No one's gonna notice in the video, so screw them. Except I do notice. I noticed it. Here is the Meg X570 Unify. Let's just open it like that. Okay, check that out in just a sec. Underneath all the cables, if I were to guess. Pretty cool, I guess. And yeah, bunch of SATA cables. And there we have the motherboards antenna and then we have le manuel and you got your drivers Ooh. and your stickers <laughs> whoops sorry about that msi cool cable stickers so you can actually know what goes where I do like that Ooh, ads for their cards let's see if the one i've got is in here it is not but maybe the monitor yeah optics mpg right there and right over there you can't see it but it's right over there and i do believe that is everything in the box okay let's actually see this thing oh ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that is sleek and that is chunky that is a lot of cooling on there okay but we're not here for a full review because we can't really do that so let's just put this thing together should probably remove the old io cover first luckily this one has its own included io sheet okay so um might have run into a sizable problem here and that is that my current power supply only has one 8-pin CPU connector. And I do believe the board requires two. So uh, 
that's that's problematic okay so as expected things didn't go quite as expected but everything is connected everything should be fine i guess this is moment of truth time it'll be a miracle if this thing actually boots let's see okay i did not connect the front panel we're gonna have to do this this way with msi's built-in little power switch okay one two three and nothing worked whoa i did not turn the power switch on okay i do see power on the board the moment of actual choo choo is here in three two one no what it started up are we gonna get a display okay no <laughs> we're not getting any display it's powered on though that is not something I expected. It's throwing out an error code A8. I, I have no real clue where to go with this, um, but I'm just gonna quickly look up what that means. If I were to guess, it probably means it needs that extra power or it just doesn't support the CPU, neither of which would be fun. I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, it's been about three hours since I stopped this recording and some things have happened. First of all, it started raining, but also some other stuff. So after getting that AB or A8 error code thing, I tried unplugging the display and then starting the system and then plugging the display back in just to like get a display. Uh, that didn't work. Then I figured maybe it was the graphics card that was like causing some sort of issue. So I threw my 1080 in there and still nothing. So I just switched back to the 5700 XT. I was getting so annoyed at the constant black screens and the constant error codes that I actually decided to remove the CPU and the cooler to see whether the motherboard would start at all without a CPU in it. And maybe then it'll go to the BIOS when there's no CPU in it. It surprised the crap out of me. The system did actually start up somewhat normally without a CPU installed, but still only black screens and a new error code this time, error code 00. After plopping the CPU back in, I didn't even bother with the cooler because if, like, if the CPU is not gonna work anyway, it's not gonna heat up, so no worries there. But after that, I tried resetting the CMOS a few times, which led to nothing. After that, I tried flashing the motherboard's BIOS to the oldest one available on the MSI support website, but I think I screwed that up somewhat because I wasn't really patient enough. I think it was kind of in the process of flashing the BIOS, but it took so long that I just figured it wasn't working at all. So I scrapped that idea. And at this point, I was just ready to cut my losses. And just before I decided to fully give up and just conclude this video as, oh, well, I, I tried guess X570 and Ryzen first gen doesn't work together. I came across a video that explained kind of how to properly update the motherboard's BIOS. So I figured why not just give it another shot. So I followed the directions very carefully and tried to flash the oldest version of the BIOS again, being patient this time. After about 15 minutes, the system rebooted itself and nothing again. So out of sheer desperation, I just figured, well, Let's try the second oldest BIOS version. And at some point, the system decided to reboot itself. Only this time, I wasn't met with an AB error or any kind of error. It was actually cycling through. And lo and behold, check this out. There it goes. No error codes so far. Displays booting up. And bam, we are in the BIOS, my friends. Motherboard. Meg X570 Unify CPU AMD Ryzen 7 1700. Everything looks fine. It's detecting the CPU just as it normally would. It's got my memory obviously clocked down to like the most stable frequency. But yeah, this this is is working fine. I'm legitimately so amped about this. I did not think this would work. But the most important thing is whether this will actually get into Windows. Okay, hoo hoo, that is very promising. Come on, you can, oh yeah. We are in to Windows. Uh, that is actually so awesome. Let's just pull up Task Manager right here. AMD Ryzen 7 1700. Currently running at 3.1 gigahertz. Memory, yep, all 16 gigs, running at 2133. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm I'm very happy right now. This took so long to get right, but it actually works. I, I actually did not believe that this would work. I thought I would just be making a video where it's like, oh, well, of course it doesn't work because AMD said it doesn't, but here we are. So anyway, I think we should rerun the same benchmarks we did with the other board. And for that, I'm gonna have to go back into the BIOS, overclock the CPU back to 3.8 gigahertz, and set my RAM at 2400 megahertz, which was what we benchmarked the previous one at. Let's just see if first gen Ryzen runs at least a little better on an X570 motherboard, which does not support it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so that load shedding thing I was talking about, you know, power cuts, that's about to happen in like five minutes and then I'll have no power and I don't want to film this later. So I'm just going to speed through this. So I wasn't actually able to get a boot um, with the settings I had. So I upped the CPU voltage to 1.37 and I also applied the AXMP profile one setting for 2400 megahertz. And that should get us into Windows so we can run our tests, hopefully before they cut the power, okay? Um, checking the CPU, we are currently at 3.8 gigahertz. Okay, um, memory at 2400 megahertz. Yeah, we should be good to go. We got one minute left, one minute, come on. Hopefully they're late on the load shedding this time, but probably not. Let's just run one test, come on. Just give me one test. I technically need more than one, but I'll be fine with one. Whew, okay, holy crap, okay. At pretty much the same voltage on both the CPU and RAM I had on the previous system. Uh, we actually clocked in a score of 1488, which is like 40 points higher than it was on the previous motherboard. So that's awesome. I'm just gonna run that again, just to verify that that is actually what is happening. And bam, even higher than before. So this time we clocked in a 1492, on Cinebench R15, um, this is kind of awesome. Okay, weirdly the power is still on. Uh, I just plugged my hard drive back in, so we should be able to get that Assassin's Creed Odyssey benchmark in. Okay, game is up. Let's just confirm our settings real quick. Yeah, 1080p, very high preset. Let's roll. It's looking good so far. Maybe they won't cut the power today. They're like 10 minutes late already. That would be nice. If it's anything above 45, then I think it's better on the X570. Let's see, I, th I think we're gonna do it. Okay, yeah, we averaged 48 frames per second, which is, I'm gonna say four, maybe three FPS higher than before. So that's cool. Uh, conclusion time, I guess. So I'm not actually sure how to conclude this thing, except for, yeah. Ryzen 1000 series totally works on X570 motherboards, or at least they do on MSI's MEG X570 Unify. It's a great board. It'll probably work on other X570 boards. I have seen other people saying that their boards were working fine with 1000 series Ryzen chips. That's why I decided to do this. But all of that being said, this was just really stupid. There is no reason you should be using a first gen Ryzen series chip with an X570 motherboard. The first gen chips aren't really built for X570. X570 comes with a host of new and awesome features that just won't work with first gen processors. That's just how it'd be. Sure, it might run, well, a lot better than X370 as I've just discovered, but you won't get any of those new and awesome features. The only reason I can think of why you might want to do something stupid like this is maybe you got an X570 for super, super cheap and you already have a first gen Ryzen and you are just waiting to upgrade. Maybe you want to pair those two for now while you wait for the upgrade. Actually, yeah, that's, <laughs> that is the only reason I can think of for why you would want to do this. But again, this whole thing was mainly just kind of stupid. It was really fun to do. I'm really glad it worked. I'm especially glad that it worked so well. If you guys want to see more in-depth benchmarks of maybe comparing the X570 versus the X370 and just seeing what kind of gains there are to be made, or if you just want to see how much further I can overclock the CPU and RAM on the new motherboard, then be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll probably get to that at some point. But until then, go ahead and like the video, get subscribed if you want to see more of these types of videos, let me know if you enjoy these kinds of videos. 
If you want to buy the motherboard, the graphics card, or the monitor I featured in the video, I'll have affiliate links to those in the description. If you buy any of them through those links, I get a small kickback and it costs you nothing. Or if you want to support the channel more directly, I have a Patreon, which I'll link down below. And there goes the power. Uh, the timing could have been a little more perfect on that one. But yeah, I have a Patreon. I'll link it down below. Go check it out. You guys are awesome. Peace.